I'm Jeremy Fiesel. I'm a lead game designer on World of Warcraft, um, well known for uh, the, the battle pets and hunter pets and other fun little shenanigans I've gotten up to over the years. So, like, the thing I always like to say about you guys who work on World of Warcraft is, like, like congratulations, because I can't think of another game that's been around as long as you have, and you guys have these, I don't want to call it constraints, but you have to have this, like, in-the-box thinking, right? Where, like, you can't just build a new system from the ground up when you make an expansion. You have to build on previously generated code and designs. And I think you guys do a tremendous job at expanding systems and designs and ideas without having to make an entirely new game every few years. So I, mean, I know that, and that's a challenging thing. I just want to congratulate you guys on that. It's hard. I know it's really hard. Yeah, I mean, I think we, we find that a core of World of Warcraft um, is maintaining World of Warcraft and World of Warcraft gameplay and kind of, you know, making sure that every single one of those patches and content updates and expansions has a lot of that, the, the stuff that players love about World of Warcraft. And then I think that we do always want to kind of push the envelope that way. We always want to try new things. We want to, you know, try out whole Torghast as a whole different game mode. Uh, you know, we want to try and intermix different elements of the game in ways that players have never seen before. Um, and that was sort of one of our goals when we were designing the, the outdoor content of Chains of Domination in particular was, you know, players have been playing with some of our, our world quests and our daily quests for you know a number of weeks now in terms of the the shadowlands content what's a way that we can really change things up there um so that was kind of you know part of that discussion is how do we take existing concepts and change them up in a way that feels new and fresh but also what new things do we want to introduce there um so for example in this space we're really delving into furthering the story of the 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 um the covenants and you know what is sort of the next stage in their evolution after they've you know really been able to fight back against the jailer in their own backyards they've been able to take back their zones what does it look like when they all really come together and start attacking the jailer and the maw what does that look like what does a fully powered Kyrian army look like you know what is an attack from maltraxis that is very well known for you know sort of being this army of the shadowlands what does that really look like where they're going to bring an entire necropolis down into the maw and start blasting everybody with necrotic laser beams and stuff like that um so it so for us it's really you know Taking those opportunities to say, you know, where can we stretch that boundary of what uh, a set a, a, an assault looks like, and really get that covenant theme in there, and then get some new concepts and new gameplay gameplay types in there, so everything feels a little bit fresh too at the same time. I think it's also great that you guys kind of have been hinting and like winking at the fact that there are Arthas roots to everything that's happening with the Lich King about like in in weapon design and in theme and in <laughs> visual aesthetic, like. You haven't like officially confirmed it yet, but it's been like, wow, there's definitely some connection between what happened to Arthas and the jailer. And was he part of like, was he working with Nozul? Like what was going on there? And so like that stuff, that stuff we'll explore and change the domination as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. Uh, it, so that background story of, of the jailer is one that we seeded a long time ago, um, and it's been really interesting, kind of building this backstory for the Shadowlands with the narrative team about, you know, what elements were was it kind of clear that that something was going on that was not quite on the up and up. You always knew that the, for example, the Neth regime, there, there was always something sinister that wasn't quite in alignment with the Legion. Um, so we're going to be delving into a little bit of that relationship, and you know, made some of some of the the keen eyed players kind of saw that in Shadowlands initially when. And they were looking at like uh, even some of the names like Denathrius and uh, you know Castle Nathria. Like wait a minute, hold on. Um, and then I think you know you, some of the cool things about delving into uh, this sort of Corthia, the city of mysteries, is that we've hidden a lot of those extra little um, explanatory elements that help further flesh out this giant backstory to the Shadowlands and going all the way back to Warcraft Three. And like uh, th there's been all these little touch points in there that we're, we're kind of finally able to start to, to shed a little bit of light on. Um, yeah, I think players are going to find some really interesting lord tidbits uh in, in this content update it's the city of mysteries after all so you know we, we want corthia to make sure that it felt like you know as you were delving into that space you kind of got a glimpse into some of those um the larger more um fundamental questions about the universe that you would expect to find in a place like this where you know this is where the caretakers of the 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 uh, the creators really of the Shadowlands would have would have um, resided and like what would they have known? There's definitely going to be some interesting you know articles I think you know and, and lore podcasts that come out after this one. You no, know, I think it's great because I mean like I've been playing the game forever. It's just in my back wall like forever, <laughs> uh, starting with Warcraft two, and it's I think it's great that you guys are still able to find places to explore and throw back to uh, because I mean like it's really easy to bring a villain back and be like he's back you know he never died but mm -hmm. to expand on bring, bringing someone new and explore an entirely new area not being stuck in Azeroth or Outland and constantly being able to add on to this world is is really fun to see like just to keep expanding.
Yeah, totally. And I think at the same time, um, it, going to a place like the Shadowlands, where it is the convergence of so many sort of different um, final resting states for so many different creatures, and there's there's a bunch of different, you know, worlds that could even exist within there. It's sort of this, this infinite afterlives idea. Like, there's so many spaces that we haven't necessarily even seen that it really helps us set up, um, you know, future mysteries. Like, we can we can start to seed some of those ideas of you know, places that we've never even conceived of in Azeroth before. It's very exciting for us on sort of the um, starting new narrative branches side of things here, too. So I do want to, like, go over some of the new... Like, well, I could talk about this. I could just have fun with you all day just going <laughs> over the game and the, the impact it's had on my life because uh, I'm a super casual player, but I really enjoy the story and how you guys have been able to tell these stories, every considerable expansion, just the way you... You know, with full voice acting and in-game cutscenes, it's just... it's it, It's been... It feels like a like a true RPG single-player game almost, even though it's not. I, I, I think that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. It really is. And I think that, you know, one of the things we felt really positive about in Shadowlands is um, the reception that we've gotten from the sort of end game chapter unlock scheme and how it's related to Renown. It feels like you get big meaty story points as you kind of progress your character in a way that feels natural and it feels like you're progressing, you know, your character at the same time as you're progressing the story. It's almost like the story feels like it's a reward for hitting yeah, a certain it's Renown a, it's, level. It's literally, it's literally a campaign mode within the MMO, which is... yeah. Cool. And we, so we really like that idea. We're going to continue. We're going to double down on that in Chains of Domination. You've probably already seen. Um, we've got eight big new campaign story chapters coming at you, this time with um, you able to experience even the covenant that you're not in. We felt it was really important that in this particular content update, it feel like uh, we're all working together. So rather than, we, at one point we were talking about splitting it off, and each covenant would kind of do their own things during one of these chapters, but that, that doesn't feel right for the, the moment that we sold the beginning of this, where we all come together and we all start attacking together. Why aren't they going and helping each other, you know, deal with some of these additional problems in their backyard? Wouldn't that also be a great opportunity for every Everybody to see the next stage in the story and then kind of get caught up so that we're all riding the same story wave together as we get into this awesome finale um, that's going to kind of finish off the Chains of Domination raid with the Sylvanas boss fight, which you can, you know that something's going to happen after that boss fight. And I'm definitely not going to talk about that today, but I'm <laughs> super excited to see that unlock in the next couple of weeks for players. And we're, I'm, I'm assuming we're also going to find more about the brokers because you can correct me yeah. if I'm wrong in this, but they're not from the Shadowlands, right? We don't know where they're from. They're just kind of there. We're going to be delving a little bit more into kind of, yeah, what, what their deal is. Um, we're not going to release sort of all of the secrets of the brokers. It's definitely one of that groups where uh, we want to tell, uh, you know, want to tell some story of them. This is kind of the, the middle of their story. So we'll definitely be seeing more of the brokers in the future. Because, uh, yeah, you're right. The, they've always been kind of there in Oribos. They're clearly not in charge of Oribos, right? Um, so this is our opportunity to show up. In, their, in a space where, you know, they kind of exist and we'll learn a little bit more about them. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more mysteries there to unravel. You know, people have been uh, speculating online like crazy about like, um, you know, is Sylvanas' story a story of redemption? And the argument of like, well, no, it's a story about accepting your fate or it's a story about being better or dealing your dealing with the cards that life gave you. But I mean, I know you can't say much, but what does Sylvanas' story arc mean to you personally? So I started playing Warcraft with Warcraft 2, and it was the first game I ever designed anything for. I just started making maps for it back in the day. Single player maps, because I wanted to tell stories. I think it was the first time I ever made Warcraft content. <laughs> uh, so Warcraft just in and of itself is super meaningful to me personally. I spent, you know, hundreds of hours playing Warcraft 3, which is where I was first introduced to all of these characters. Um, for my part, what I want to see is... Um, is a satisfying character conclusion uh, because she has had such a long arc and there's so many questions still about her. I think whatever the finale is here, it needs to um, help tie all of those things together, tie this years and years and years of this sort of character development. And I think one of the most interesting things there that we've seen sort of with a lot of the lore hounds of our community and, and how they're talking about this fight is um, that there are still some questions about her motivations and that have never really fully been answered. Um, and a big part of that gets back to her history and some parts of that that we've never told. So I, I think a, a chunk of that is going to be um, sort of delving into to the why of Sylvanas is almost just as important as the fight in terms of figuring out, you know, what what is the conclusion of, of her story or what, what happens to her next? What's the conclusion of this particular chunk of her story arc? That's it's, it's a very you know ephemeral way to say, like, I, I actually think it's really important that what happens to her after this is um, is satisfying and a little unexpected and um, and 
I don't know, makes us all happy. <laughs> all right, because like the sad thing about like Arthas is that he like he completely fell off. Like there was no mm-hmm. redemption story for him. Like it was up to the point where you killed him, and then it was a split second that he realized you know everything he had done. So there was no redemption for him. It was just gone. Uh, Savannah still has that opportunity to do that. She's not too far gone yet. And I guess that's something you'll explore again in the Change of Domination in the next raid. And you've been seeing that a little bit in the cinematics you've seen so far. Um, just watching her facial expressions, you can see some of the gears turning. She's thinking about what's going on with Anduin. She's not super comfortable with this. Maybe the plan isn't everything she thought it was. Um, that can go so many different directions. And there are some directions I think that can feel really unsatisfying. Uh, and so I think that, yeah, one of the things that's gonna be really, really important for us is making sure that where that kind of branches off to and these the, these kind of um, the remaining IGCs that are yet to be shown uh, over the next couple of weeks uh, sort of help take us through that and, and sort of the next step in her mental processes in a way that everybody kind of understands. Um, they may not necessarily agree with, but at least is in, is very in character for her. Yeah, my, 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 I have my own theories, but I, I like the, uh, the, the kind of hinting of her going full circle and then like becoming what she never wanted to be, which was, you know, Arthas's general you know first mm-hmm. to, first in command like she's rapidly getting to that point and i think i think she's going to realize that you know what she's become is not what she wanted and it's everything she didn't want to be in you know realization but that's just my theory that's not anything confirmed it's just a theory so going back to like you said you're going to see some characters that people were expecting does that include like the thanos and varian and some other characters that have died that we haven't seen yet if you can talk about it <laughs> Well, I mean, so these would be the characters that were essentially thrown in, like, the deepest pit of the Maw. So we'll be seeing our old friend uh, Nerzul, what happened to him. Um, this specifically not um, the, the Arthas side of things, but the original Nerzul and all of the terrible things that he did. Like, what is his fate? We'll see that. Uh, we'll be seeing what was the next stage for Garrosh um, after, you know, getting a lot of his anima siphoned in Revendreth and getting tossed in the Maw. What happened next? Uh, yeah, so those, those are a couple of the characters that we're going to be oh, beating great, in, those, in the dark halls of the Sanctum. And that's, again, going back to, like, Warcraft 3 Roots, which is great to see that. Because I think, uh, I mean, when I first heard of Nizuel, he was already in the helm, but he used to he used to be an orc warlock before that. Yep. So, and, so I mean, he kind of instigated a lot of the original stuff that caused Gul'dan to do blah, 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 blah. So, like, it's all it's all very connected all the way back to original Warcraft 3, uh, which, it, yeah, it was, an, an, again, one of the kind of really fun parts about telling this particular chunk of the story is you're kind of wrapping in, you know, like 20 years of lore into some finale conclusions. Mm-hmm.